Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new faction that was added to Gems of War yesterday of the Deep Hive. I just want to go and uh, recap everything for any of you that may have not caught it on uh, stream, as well as there's a few teams uh, related to this place. So, Deep Hive, this place is a brown-green faction, which is the same exact coloration as something like the Amethrax uh, faction. Uh, so you can use all the same uh, overlapping troop other than for pure faction. And it's associated to that of Drifting Sands, uh, which also ends up bringing Drifting Sands to 18 stars, which is tied at the highest amount of stars that any kingdom can uh, currently obtain. So if you want to have a small uh, bonus while delving in this location, uh, you need to uh, level up some of your browns. Uh, browns aren't really used for too many uh, good kingdoms anyways, and you can get extra armor for your ruin and uh, get your extra 50% if you do end up getting that upgrade. Uh, whenever you do end up upgrading that, if you do choose to have those little bit of extra stats, which you might need as this place is a little bit luck-based, however, the legend is insanely good, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it would end up increasing your horde level by uh, 50%. So basically, we have it at 200, but it's effectively at uh, 300. But yeah, as far as troops within this uh, faction, they are pretty decent. If we go over to uh, the Deep Hive right over here, um, uh, the main one that's relevant, of course, is the uh, legend. Uh, similar to that of uh, Amethrax. It actually shares a lot of similarities with Amethrax. But uh, it has a really, really good legend with almost everything else not too relevant. The tank is the... Uh, or well, this is a triple damage. Uh, this you could end up utilizing. It has a potential... Uh, triple damage if there's 13 or more uh, browns, uh, which can end up being uh, somewhat useful depending on if that's actually enough damage to end up securing a kill. Also stealthy so it doesn't get targeted. Uh, that one's okay. This one's a weaker AoE. Um, the main mechanic that a lot of these have though is uh, this right over here. They have two independent chances to uh, basically uh, gain either an extra turn or half their mana back. And that's basically what makes these troops viable. And the main two that you would actually end up using, uh, mostly when you're running through the faction is, uh, or when you're finally doing pure faction, at whatever level you decide to do that on, is the Scarab Knights and the uh, Queen Beatrix, with Queen Beatrix being the absolute best. Uh, Scarab Knights is pretty much a nice tank. It's 50% scroll reduction, has an armor gain, and it has barrier. It, on top of that, it also has extra turn chance and the possibility of gaining half its mana back. So it has a lot of things going for it. But Beatrix is where this uh, faction really shines. And uh, she's actually pretty viable in the meta. Uh, I haven't really messed around with too many teams with her, but she's very much an alternative uh, Truffle. I still prefer Truffle more than her, but she definitely has her uh, niche instances where she will be better. Uh, one of those main uh, instances is the fact that she has Cleanse. Uh, she gets to cleanse all allies whenever you match uh, four or five times. She's not the only thing in the game that has the capability of cleansing all allies. However, she is still one, and while she is hard countered by stun in that regard, uh, compared to something like the uh, Voice of Orpheus, uh, she is still going to be pretty decent at cleansing nonetheless. Other than that, it also gets to uh, create a bunch of green and brown. It does not get gem boost ratio on that, so it does actually create less uh, amount of gems than that of the uh, Gob Truffle. However, it's still a pretty decent amount, nine of uh, both of them. It also gets to do scatter true damage, which is different than doing full AoE. However, it is true damage, and it can concentrate, so after you've got secured a kill, that will concentrate to the other three, rather than wasting some of the damage compared to a full AoE. But the main thing that makes this thing interesting is is unlike the other ones, she doesn't actually have a boost ratio for her uh, percent chance. Uh, all the other ones have a 25% with, I believe, a 2% boost ratio per brown, somewhere around there. But this has none, but it has a base 40% with its uh, percent chance that it has. So it's not necessarily dependent on any specific color being on the board, even though you obviously have a lot of green and brown with her mana accumulation. But there are four, two 40% chances to gain an extra turn off this thing. And uh, one of them is for an extra turn, and the other one, of course, is for the uh, mana back, half your mana back. And uh, this will lead to a lot of situations where not only might she get an extra turn off the board, but you have a backup extra turn simply off the ability. So even if you miss, you still might end up securing an extra turn. Not only that, but in mana accumulating for the rest of your team, let's say you're uh, casting, you have two of these on your team and you're casting the first one. Well, it might gain half its mana back, so it's not even blocking the other queen that you have on your team as much. Because if that ends up happening, you're almost going to gain full mana if you hit like a five times green into a... Um, into half your mana back, because of course she uses uh, green and blue, so that brown will feed other allies on your team, which you can use for various utilities, but the other thing will end up feeding right back into her, uh, similar of course to Truffle. Uh, but yeah, it's basically a true damage version of Truffle with Cleanse. Not exactly, but it's, that's pretty much what she is. And uh, yeah, she's a pretty viable troop and the most viable thing that came from here, and uh, we'll probably seeing a lot of it into the future. It's very situational, uh, I feel like even more situational than Truffle, but in those situations, particularly like against Frost Mage and Guild Wars, I feel like it's the main instance where it's going to shine because Frost Mage teams generally do not run stun 
and you could easily try to focus them down. Uh, they might actually run some merge though, so uh, that might be a little bit of an issue, but you'll have mana accumulation, and uh, generally something like green or brown, you could easily uh, do that against a Frost Mage team, and it might not necessarily be denied by any kind of mechanic that they have as far as conversions. So it has some potential in that regard, but uh, I feel like Guild Wars is the main location for it, more so than uh, anywhere's, because it won't really upscale as well due to the fact that it doesn't have full AoE. But anyways, that's that. Let's get over to the uh, actual uh, faction itself. So if we go over to the uh, thing right over here, as far as the uh, weapon that we ended up getting, we got uh, this little thing. Of course, all the reward tiers are still the same. Uh, shop is still the same as far as uh, how much they cost. And that the fact that you'll probably need to buy uh, some amount of multiple tier 7s if you want to go uh, all the way to 500 pure faction if you're looking to do that. But do keep in mind, uh, you definitely do not need to necessarily do that. That's more so just for uh, people much later in the game. But as far as the uh, weapon, it gets to deal damage to an enemy and then charms them. And then there's a 30% uh, independent chance uh, to gain an extra turn and half mana back. So it has that same mechanic that all the other things within this uh, faction has. Overall, I don't think this is going to be as useful due to its lack of a uh, gem spawn or any kind of uh, board control in that regard. However, it's still a potential uh, extra turn charm. And if I'm not mistaken, this might be the only extra turn charm in the game with the only exception now that I just thought is Wisp. But uh, yeah, there's not that many in the game. And Wisp is like a 9 mana cost troop that you would almost never use ever since it got nerfed and doesn't have Empowered anymore. But uh, now Hero can kind of do somewhat similar and loop it back into itself uh, even better than what a Wisp would be able to do. Because if this thing gets half its mana back, it's only going to be an 8 mana cost. A little bit of a uh, high up front, but uh, with the extra turn chance and the... Uh, the half mana back chance, it's, it should end up redeeming itself. Uh, overall, this weapon's relatively average. It's definitely not going to be like one of the meta ones. I don't really foresee unless attack gains become meta sometime. Because Charm has always been a rather underwhelming mechanic. And that it just does a little bit of attack based on their attack. But uh, very, very rarely uh, does that actually situationally work. And attack gain teams are super rare these days. Due to the fact that uh, most teams run with multipliers rather than specifically attack gain. And uh, due to uh, multiplier teams, you cannot actually apply that damage. So if something's about to do like uh, three times damage, let's say like Web Spinner, and you try charming it, it's not going to do three times damage to its allies. If it has 60 attack, it's only going to do 60 when you charm it. It's not going to do 180, unfortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be a pretty nice hard counter to things like that. But uh, it doesn't take into account multipliers. And a lot of teams these days, due to the increased amount of multipliers, do run Skull Spam teams that run some form of multiplier. So uh, do be mindful of that. And for the most part, that weapon will not be as viable due to that reason. But anyways, as far as the layout, it's a hive. Uh, we have basically a honeycomb shape right over here. This is a guaranteed treasure room right over here. Uh, every single time, that shall be a treasure room. You can simply take a straight path right over there. Otherwise, you do the entire honeycomb and then do that and then do the final battle. Uh, those are basically your path forwards if you want to go and do this delve. Uh, let's just go and do a battle real quick and we'll go do it with uh, the pure faction team actually uh we'll do the scarab knight into double queen beatrix just to kind of show her i uh, do keep in mind you're obviously going to want to do a different team when you're progressing forward however this is just to show some uh, pure faction here as uh, we've already completed it and very rarely do we actually show some during the uh, uh video itself so figured we might as well so uh right here uh, we do have our tank. Uh, we're going to want to wait until he drops his barrier before we actually go and uh, cast him. Uh, right here, uh, due to enchants and the fact that we don't really have anything, we're pretty much just going to want to deny him on important mana. So we'll just kind of poke around, hopefully get something. I don't believe we do. Oh, yes, we do have a blue right over there. So we'll grab that. And now we can finally get this rolling. So we have the first Beatrix. Uh, this is going to have a pretty substantial amount of true damage, depending on what your stats are. And it also will be able to go and... Uh, one interesting thing about it, too is it does gain, uh, that I forgot to mention, it does have uh, true damage based on twice its magic. So while it doesn't have a full AoE, it almost has, a ha almost has like a half of a full AoE, kind of. Obviously, it's not actually AoE as far as dealing damage to all enemies simultaneously. However, it does gain double the benefit from its magic. So something like this arcane spell that it has does actually increase its damage by two, not by one, uh, which is uh, pretty noteworthy as well. But we'll go for this. Ideal, we'll hit an extra turn, and we did. Uh, of course, we could hit it in two different ways, either off the board itself or off of the ability itself. So uh, even if we miss it on the board, we might still end up gaining an extra turn. So if you're wondering why we're still getting the extra turn, it's because the random 40% uh, trigger on it, of course. But uh, right here, we did drop our barrier, so we're going to go to want for the, go for this. Unfortunately, we did not get our uh, half mana start. I mean, uh, we didn't get our extra turn, but we did get our half mana start. As you can see right there, uh, we simply did his ability, and despite having no board control, he got half of it back. Uh, but now we'll go for our Beatrixes here. Obviously, they got up off enchant, and uh, now we can pretty much just go and try farming for extra turns. We didn't get it there. Uh, however, we got it off the board. Uh, right there, again, we didn't get it off the ability, but we got it off the board. And as you can see, we got it both locations there, and it is just super dead at that point. And uh, that's pretty much what you do. You just kind of loop the Beatrix into itself, and uh, it's pretty strong. It's uh, pretty strong, to say the least. It's um, quite a bit of damage. 
It is decently loopy, but uh, my biggest concern with it, uh, and why I'm very rarely going to use this, is its infinite loop capability isn't as good as Truffle, uh, and I feel like that's its biggest fault. It's really creative and a lot of fun to use. Uh, probably one of the finer troops we've actually gotten possibly all year, but um, I feel like it does have a little bit of an inconsistency to it, because right now, let's say we constantly want extra turns, we might get it, but we also might not get it. Like right there, we didn't get the extra turn, but we got it off the board. And while generally you're going to be hitting one of the two, uh, it is, of course, very possible that you don't hit either of the uh, two that you're looking for. Uh, so right here, we'll kind of just let Beetle tank and uh, get another one here. The other one's still trying to get up off Enchant. It's blocked enough that we're probably not going to be able to go and get it. But uh, right there, again, we didn't get either of the two extra turns, unfortunately. But we'll get our mana there. We'll have two of them. They'll hopefully feed back into the other. I'm actually going to cast for once this one first, just because it should hopefully feed him the full mana. Or her, I mean. And then we get all three, actually. And uh, then we just keep spamming it until they either die or until we die. But uh, we generally will not die from uh, running through this. At this point, it almost looks like we're running through Pure Faction. Might as well. <laughs> Might as well just show the Pure Faction while we're doing this. Because we actually tore through it pretty quickly uh, when we did it uh, earlier. I thought it was slightly because of luck, but it might be a combination of that Beatrix is just this strong uh, with po this extra amount of potion effects. But um, yeah, definitely a relevant troop to uh, consider into team builds. Again, I haven't done too much team building with it yet, but I will be into the future. Uh, the main component I plan on using it for is probably for next Guild War. Uh, of course, Guild War is around the corner, so uh, when Guild War does come back around, we'll probably go and uh, show some teams related to uh, Beatrix at the time. Uh, that'll be able to be uh, utilized for it that week. But for now, let's go and do our triple thing. Hopefully get our extra turns everywhere, uh, because we have a really nice setup now, all three of them with full mana. Uh, we are going to want to take that off the board and just hope that this one hits it naturally. And uh, it does hit it naturally. Very nice. So we just got a pretty much infinite loop. Uh, obviously, it's not a perfectly infinite, not even remotely compared to Truffle, but it's it, it can get like a pseudo-infinite, kind of like a Divinish Fall of Quillen team, where it's not necessarily infinite, but it's infinite enough to kill the team. Uh, and that's all that really matters. It doesn't matter if it actually will go on forever. It only matters if it goes on long enough to kill out the enemy team. And uh, Queen Beatrix can normally do that. Uh, so pretty nice for her. Okay, so we'll go and what do we need here? We'll take ourselves a blue right over here. Actually, do we go for Skull? Um, I had the same dilemma when I was doing it earlier. I actually am going to go for Skull just because he does hit pretty hard. And while we do have Barrier, I don't want to ruin my Barrier yet. Now would be a time to ruin our Barrier. So we have one right there. We'll let it go down. I want to wait till we have slightly more mana before we just throw our Barrier away. I also generally don't want to cast this ability, even though we do have a chance to extra turn. Uh, it, there's a higher chance that it won't extra turn than it will. So uh, ideally we don't. Also, it blocks our green mana. Which is the other bigger concern that we'd have to worry about with that. Okay, so we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll grab ourselves a green right over there. Uh, we still need a little bit more mana. I'm actually going to hold my cast. Uh, he's going to gain barrier, unfortunately. But I want to make sure we have everything up. So we can hopefully just infinitely loop off these three as long as none of them miss. So we didn't miss that one. We did miss that one. Unfortunately, no uh, default extra turn. Nor did we get it off the board. We'll go for it again. Again, no automatic extra turn. But we still got it off the board. So was able to preserve it. Uh, unfortunately, from here, we don't have much, so we'll go grab the green there. I'll leave the browns as is, since we don't actually need the mana in this particular team. Of course, if you're using her in more so a Guild War kind of team, uh, or PvP team. Well, I, I wouldn't really advise her for PvP, but I'm pretty sure some people will figure out something. Uh, I don't know, I don't feel like she'd be quick enough for PvP, personally. Uh, just due to the inconsistency. But, um... Yeah, she does have a really, really decent um, true damage as far as the overall amount. Uh, even when she doesn't have um, all these potion effects, uh, due to the fact that she's getting double based on magic, you can, of course, set uh, medals of Nisha. And uh, Nisha will end up helping her to um, um, basically just increase her damage uh, with uh, three, two of them set because you're probably going to use a 20% with her because there really isn't a good way to give her half mana start because of um, that one Wild Folk 50% from uh, Pan's Veil. Isn't uh, King Salinas, I was trying to remember his name, but uh, King Salinas uh, isn't the greatest of options to synergize with Queen Beatrix, uh, especially since you're conflicting uh, physical damage with true damage. It's pretty much the, like the bottom line main instance where Queen Beatrix comes out uh, and comparatively is uh, Queen Beatrix has the capability of um, having that um, true damage aspect. Uh, which is the main kind of distinguishing point I feel like it has. But uh, there we go. We just randomly ran <laughs> pure faction there. And other than that, uh, of course, as far as some other teams, um, we have ourselves a standard truffle. I uh, figured to show this just because far Troll, Cowboy King, Gob Truffle, uh, Essence of Evil. Uh, of course, if you need a cheaper alternative for that, simply replace out Doom's Glaive. Uh, Essence of Evil is just obtained from 250 wins off of Plague Lord here. Class makes his team quite a bit cheaper. Uh, one other alternative is Mirage Queen in the last slot. However, the coloration of this delve does not actually allow for Mirage Queen due to it being a brown-green restriction. And, of course, Mirage Queen is a, um, a uh, red-blue, so it does not have overlap there. 
But uh, you just put Essence of Evil there and it'll work perfectly fine. As far as a low team, if you don't have any kind of higher rarity stuff, uh, you can use this, this really simple Shield of Urskia into Rowane. Shield of Urskia, another pretty easy weapon to obtain. You get it from 250 wins off of the Urskia Hero Class from the, uh, or sorry, from the Sentinel Hero Class from Urskia. Then you just use Double Leprechaun for the extra plus one green and their Empower into Explosion. And of course, Rowane is your main powerhouse that you get for free from Forest of Thorns. A really cheap team to end up building out and uh, very powerful. And it does upscale all the way. And of course, the Pure Faction, which is simply the uh, Scarab Knight and the Double Queen Beatrix. But anyways, that is the new faction, which is pretty much be summed up as pretty much just the B. Uh, we'll probably be seeing some more of it into the future. Pretty sure even if we repicked some uh, PvP, we'd eventually find a uh, random B lurking around. Uh, it might not be used in too many defend teams yet, but uh, um, personally, I don't feel like it's going to be as much of a PvP. It's mostly going to, hey, Truffles still. But yeah, I, I still feel like Truffles is going to be the meta uh, much, much more than this new queen. But uh, it'll find its way into Guild War teams. Uh, the, the biggest purpose that this thing has, uh, again, is it, it's going to be used in two main types of teams. It's going to be used in true damage teams, uh, ones that just need a nice cleanup troop. Uh, it'll basically be like the Rowane of true damage. Not exactly. Uh, that's not exactly a perfect comparison. I guess um, it, it's most similar probably to Winter Imp, actually. Like a Winter Imp that has better extra turn capability, but less of an increase to its damage uh, is what it's actually probably most similar to. But it'll be a nice uh, true damage cleanup kind of troop. And it'll also be a really, really great guild raw option due to Frost Mage being pretty popular. And while its uh, attack damage does get negated by Submerge, the fact that it can counter out things like Freeze and other annoying status effects is going to be pretty beneficial. Uh, just be careful if you ever run it against stun. But anyways, guys, that will wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions about the Dell, feel free to leave it on the comment section below. And I will catch all of you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful uh, weekend and stay safe from the virus. Goodbye, everyone.